around them in close contact for more than 15 minutes, you're supposed to be calling. I'm like, that's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Why 15 minutes? Like, how did you guys come to think? Like, I just, I just want to Everything is changing. I know. <laughs> Shut the eyes, sitting head, neck, and trunk straight. Chin is parallel to the floor. And let's begin for Palabhati. Either your rhythm or my rhythm, you choose. Om Bhur Vaswama Tat Savitur Vrihiyam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhur Vaswama Tat Savitur Vrihiyam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhur Vaswaha Tat Savitur Vrihiyam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhur Vaswaha Tat Savitur Vrihiyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhur Vaswaha Tat Savitur Vrihiyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhur Vaswaha Tat Savitur Vrihiyam 
Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat Om Bhogwa Swaha Tat Savitur Varinigam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yonaha Prachodayat
Next time the eyes approach the top center, blink and shut. And then rotating the ruler, opening the eye, sliding the eyes up, opposite side. Next time, the eyes approach the top, center, blink and shut. Now allowing the eyes to remain shut, begin to make disc, traveling to the left, around the back of the head, varying the size and the speed. Next time the eyes approach the starting point, reverse. Next time the eyes approach the starting point, allowing the eyes Stop softening to the back of the skull, bringing those palms together, rubbing them together, giving lots of heat, lots of energy. And when you feel the heat, cut the palms over the eyes, taking the energy from the crown chakra, directly through the arms, the forearms, the palms, back into the eyes. And then once the heat begins to dissipate, gently give the eyes, temples, cheeks, anywhere that needs any extra touch of healing this evening. So let's go ahead and let's all start with some Nadi Shodnam. So we're going to do it a little bit longer tonight, just because with everything that's going around. So as you do the Nadi Shodnam, be mindful of a few things. Notice if the two sides are balanced, if one side feels more dominant, many times just bringing awareness to the opposite side, just that mental, right, bringing the mind there can create a little off. 
and then they feel a little bit more balanced. So be mindful with the inhalations and exhalations. Does one feel like it requires more effort? It could be inhalation on left, takes more effort, exhalation on right, maybe the same side. Spend some time noticing the nuances of, of the breath. See if you can refine the exhalation so much that you don't even feel it on the hands, the fingers. See if you can start to slow it down a little bit more. Now the next time you exhale through the left, stay there. So keep the right nose, the right side pressed in. Inhale, exhale only through the left side. Inhaling and exhaling only through the left side.
close the left side, inhale. So when you're exhaling, or the next inhalation, you can switch, switch over, inhale, exhale through the right side only. So sometimes we're not even aware of the differences between the two sides. Perhaps you notice that one side you have a little more resistance. Perhaps no. Finish this round. Push the arms straight up, flip the hands down, squeeze the hands in, and, or the fingers in and out, squeeze the hands. So pick a pace that feels really appropriate. And try, so we're not, don't worry so much about the thumb inside or outside. This one in particular is just for the heart. So you squeeze and you splay out. And be committed. Make some movement here. Make the kids do this with me at work. Nice. <laughs> yeah, after lunch we do a little bit of creative movement. Move it up to work. That's a good one. You, you and I even tell this. them like this is good for your heart. <laughs> like, they'll do anything I do. They'll just start doing it. So I'll just start doing yoga and they'll start doing it. <laughs> <laughs> that works. So it says there are five people online, but they're only. I have four things here. Greetings, Linda. Mimi is present. Good evening, darling, and hello, Kaylee. Did you count yourself? It won't sh no, because I'm the... Oh, it doesn't like count you? Mm -mm. Carly just popped up, hello. So keep it moving. So we're gonna start the practice with just a few things that it will be good for circulation, heart, immune system. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen. Fifteen. Fourteen. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, go ahead really slowly, immediately push the legs forward. I want you to stay high. So if you wanna sit on the block, you can, but you're starting with the right leg and you just lift up, left leg up. My leg's asleep. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <look at> <laughs> got a floppy foot. <laughs> you don't wake up. That's entertaining. <laughs> oh, that's waking up now. 
<laughs> but don't make fun of me. Right? You use me every day. <sighs> so just alternating. Remember, we have more left nodes in the legs than any other part of the body. So we're going to do some stuff just to get some the lymphatic system pumping. Keep lifting up and down. Try not to throw it. So use some muscle here, not momentum. Try to stay really long in the spine. Our tendency is to rock that. When we rock back, we can get up higher, but that's not. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> you can sit on a block that keeps you more honest. No, the block will keep you block. honest. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because you you're able to feel the yeah. the tilt a lot easier. So if you're at home and you are cheating. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> Sit on a block. 18. 17. 16. 15. 14. 13. 12. 11. Finish it out, finish it out. Since we're on the block, let's just stretch out just a little bit before we move on. So take the turn down at the thighs, so the thighs are going to be parallel to the short line of the mat. And then you walk the calves in, the legs in, so that they're parallel to the long line of the mat. Now you can stay right here, you can walk it forward, you can use a block. And the feet, you we're all going to be a little different here. So you kind of adjust. To the one that feels like, okay, yep, this is where I need to be. Is it okay if I feet down? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Slide your feet in just about two inches. Like that? Or, this way. Back towards the mat. Like, so if they're here, to look at. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Like the heel and all. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. Nice. Couple more breaths here. Walk it back. Let's stay on the block. Just cross the legs, opposite leg in that lead position. Push the arms up and just again pump. If you would like to, 
Oh, well, we're finished with that, but they could have been anyway. Sorry. Oops. At least I'm getting the messages tonight. I haven't been getting them, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's That's weird. weird. I know. It's like Are you sure you're not, that's this. like a settings thing? No, I did nothing different. And now I'm getting messages. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a Facebook thing. Oh. Yeah, I've been having issues with some of my stuff too. If you would like to do Kapalapati, you can do that. You don't have to, but feel free to. just want to get the body moving a bit. Remember the lymphatic system doesn't flush itself. So movement is key. We see this all the time, right? We see someone and we just look at their eyes and we're like, oh, you don't look like you're feeling well. tired you can see it right because it's coming through the lymphatic system that's part of the toxins so when we're feeling depressed or any kind of emotion that keeps us feeling more sedentary it's even worse Twenty seven. Twenty six. 25, One, go ahead, release, push the legs forward, go into Paschimottanasana. So let's just get some stretch here in the legs. As much as you can, draw the toes back towards the shins. reverence do you have towards your practice? So reverence could be respect, awe, right? Love. don't have reverence for yourself you you cannot love yourself okay 
pull it up. So let's get the front part of the body here. So you can keep the block there. Take the hands behind you, heels in line with the sitting bones. Fingers can point to the butter away. Inhale, press up. Exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Try to keep the hands splayed, keep the palms really pressed. Notice if one kind of starts to lift up a bit. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Press through the fingers. Be mindful, be present. When you get to the top, see if you can get a little extra lift when you get right to the very top of it. So you have no real reverence and respect for yourself. You cannot love yourself, which means you cannot love others. You cannot love anything. This goes all back to this. We have to understand we have to differentiate the difference between attachment and love. The next time you come up, stay up. And if you're comfortable, you don't have to let the head go back, but if you're comfortable, I want you to do Kapalabhati here. doesn't have to be back, but if you can let it drop back for really getting into the lymph nodes through the neck, especially with Kapalabhati here. But you do what you need to do for the body that you're traveling in this evening. <clears throat>
27, 26. If you know there's a spot that feels like it really needs it, get in there. 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, go ahead, release, open the legs up just as far as you want and come into Upavishna Kanasana. So back to this reverence and respect and love business. We've been hoodwinked into thinking that self-love is taking a hot bath or going on a holiday or going to the spa or reading a good book. We think that's what self-love is. Self-love is having enough respect for yourself that you want to do the right thing. Even if it's once a day, you make a decision to do the right thing, it's worth being applauded. Because on some level, you're validating yourself, your higher self, your conscience. Okay, bring the legs together. You might need a blanket, maybe not, but we're going to go into Subdivada Konasana. So the blanket, if you need it, it'll be nice to place underneath the lower back. So you just, and you can have it flat or double rolled. So right, at, bring it up so it's pressing into the butt, soles of the feet together, and then you release down over it. So that just gives you, it just honors the natural curve of the lower back. You know, what I want you to do is just be mindful. We're going to be here for a bit. So if you need to get some blocks, place them at an angle to prop yourself up a little bit to support, by all means, do it. So we're doing this because I want the body to start becoming familiar with the placement with the flexibility here. So you can always bring the heels in a bit closer, certainly not required. Karen, do you have a hot yoga? Hmm? So is this turning into hot yoga? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> <It's not. laughs> <laughs> I thought about that today and totally just took me. <laughs> I texted you all right even. <laughs> I thought I wonder if she's like, because I'm like, okay then, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't know how to take okay, that response. I don't know how to put all right even. <laughs> so next, if you hear me text. If you, if I text you, okay, then just hear me going, okay, then. Okay, then. You <laughs> should that D-E-N. Then. Okay, then. Okay, then. then. Okay, <laughs> then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, then. <laughs> They'll spell it properly. <laughs> That's just confusing the meaning. I'll <laughs> <laughs> <Paul> understand. <laughs> Now I want you to slide the left heel as close to the groin as you can. 
push the right leg out. You're, we're doing tree. Bring the arms up, extend the arms, let the palms just face each other. We're doing tree on the floor. So the thing we're doing tree on the floor is it keeps us honest. So what's happening with the right hip is the left leg drawing it over. If that's happening, you can put a blanket or a block underneath. Don't let that hip shift. Keep both hip pointers facing up towards the ceiling. Couple more breaths here. So we've been taught that self-love is feeding the senses. I'm not saying don't enjoy a hot bath. I love a hot bath. But we've been taught that self-love is feeding the senses, which then keeps us pulled into the world. So we do something, enjoy it, but be honest about what it is. And it's not self-love. It's feeding the senses. Let me take a hot bath with a glass of wine. Or let me just veg out here. I've had a really rough day, so let me just veg out with the TV on. Calling that relaxation. It's not. No way, shape, or form is that any kind of true self-love. Switch sides. We have to start being really honest. Same thing, keep those hip pointers square. Self-love is doing your practice so that if you do it for the right reasons, right? I mean, we can sit here and do a practice because we want a yoga ass. That's not self-love. But we can do a yoga practice because we want to reduce stress in our lives, out in our system. We want to do our practice so that we can learn more about who we are. So doing a practice can very much be about self-love. Eating can be about self-love. What do you eat? Is it the food that you consume? Is, is it as nonviolent as it can be? Do you eat with the intention that you are feeding God? The food is God, right? You're feeding God so that you can serve God. That's self-love. Are you just eating because we're gluttonous and we're greedy? Go ahead, release. Pull the legs in. Now you can just do spinal rolls. Perfectly fine. You can also use the blocks. Otherwise, you're gonna roll up and bring it all the way up, take it down. Spinal rolls are perfectly fine if you want to use blocks. So when you roll up, you can actually use the blocks to help stand up.
Remember, if we're starting to feel under the weather, the legs are going to be the first thing physically that we start to feel fatigue in, one of the first things. Going back to this self-love business, it is imperative that we learn to love ourselves. And one way we do that is to follow our conscience. The way that we do that is to do our practice so that we clear these impurities from the heart so the mind has the ability to think correctly, to think purely. If you want, feel free to mix and match as well too. A confused mind is not fit for any path. It's not being negative, it's being, oh, okay, what do I need to get rid of this confusion? You know, self-love is not looking at our body and going, damn, girl, you fine as fuck. <laughs> or wearing something nice, wanting compliments. No, that's ego stroking. That is not self-love. 18, 17, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, You have time to do one more and then come to standing. Stay standing. Take the hands just underneath the feet. Bend the knees as much as you need to. Flare the elbows to the left and the right. Give yourself just a little tug here. Release the hand, step back, downward facing dog. Okay, from downward facing dog, lift the right leg up. Immediately follow it with the left leg. So move in between the two, 27, 26. 25, hands on blocks if you need them. We're gonna be here for a minute. Point your fingers or middle fingers parallel. You decide, really press back firmly through the palms so you lengthen the spine. Let's focus on more lengthening the spine than anything. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 
11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Finish it out if you need to. Drop to all fours. Okay. Let's just bring the right hand to the middle. Slide the right knee. So I want the right knee right behind the right wrist. Shoulder, elbow, wrist in one line. And I want the right foot right behind the left knee. Ball of the foot or top of the foot. You decide. Take the left leg and lift it up. Or take it straight out to behind you. So now you have wrist knee, ankle, arch. Lift the left arm up. So we want to stay in one line here. Now lift the left leg up. And we're just holding. Try to keep the left leg, the left hip. So you want to look down and you want to be able to see those toes. You can't see the toes, the legs too far behind. The balance is pretty, it takes a lot here, but we're activating the obliques. We're getting some, we're targeting some different muscles here. 18, 17, 16. Don't let that leg go behind. 15, 14, 13, 12. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release. Do the same thing to the second side. So joint stack. Everything should be lined up on the mat. When you lift the leg, it should be in one line with the hip pointer. Don't let it draw behind. Maybe you can't lift the leg very high. That's okay. Maybe you need to let the foot just hover above the floor. That's okay as well. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. Try to keep the arms stacked as well, too. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release. Do five cat and cows go back to the first side. But so actually, just do five cat and cows, and then pause there. When you've done your five cat and cows, I want you to keep the hands in that same position. So don't let the hands move, but you're gonna take the legs back. So it's like we've got a plank going on, a front plank and a kind of a side plank. Now what you're going to do, so make sure that your foot is in line with the arch, right foot's in line with the arch, the gaze, the torso is facing for it, but I want you to lift up and touch the foot to the thigh. So open the hips. Try to keep the palms flat. So do you want us to keep our body uh -huh. forward? Yep, I want, you, I want the body facing me, the torso. And the hips facing the east. And the right? hips facing the east, yep. And then you lift the foot up and you let it touch down. Nice parties. See if you can keep the left foot down and just lift the right leg up. 
And if you can bring, if you can get to remembering where the foot was in the tree, see if you can slide the foot up. Maybe it doesn't get there, but maybe you can bring it up a little bit more on the thigh. 18. Well, do you want us to lift the foot up or do you want us to like the, kind of put some like yeah, but try not to, yeah, so I want you to lift the entire, the, so you're lifting it up. So the foot stays down, but you're lifting the entire leg up. That. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 18. Good. 17. That's nice, Perkies. 16. 15. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, lift and hold, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, release. All four is five cat and cows and start the same thing on the center side. So back to this self-love business. When we listen to our conscience, when we do the right thing, and we've talked about this, baby steps, choose water over wine, choose to go to sleep instead of surfing the internet, choose to remove yourself from a, a group of people that are just bitching and complaining, don't participate. So the same thing, so hands forward, torso forward, draw the hips back. And we're gonna start lifting that leg up. If you can lift it so the foot is coming in the upper, inner upper thigh, go for it. Just try not to like bang on the knee. Try to really press firmly through the right foot. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All fours, five cat and cows, press back downward facing dog. When you get to downward facing dog, immediately lift the left leg and then the right leg. So going back to this reverence for ourselves, this all, right, for Part of the reason why we can't love ourselves is because we've spent lifetimes doing things that aren't lovable. Really, if we look at our thoughts, are our thoughts loving thoughts? Are our thoughts lovable? If people really knew our thoughts, would they be drawn to us? People really knew why we did the things we did, our actions, would they be like, wow. So 
you're really doing that from a place of being completely selfless. So alternating between the legs, up and down. We have to start, like I said, even if it's just the, the smallest little thing, one thing a day, do something that is the right thing. Just being really mindful with one thing. Whatever it is, start doing something. So we start acknowledging our conscience instead of the ego. And when we start developing reverence for ourselves, and we start doing the right thing, right? When you love yourself, you want to do the right thing. You want to do it. It's not because it's put on you to do it. You want to do it. And sometimes the right thing, according to what society says, can look really harsh. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, one. Finish it out if you need to. Bring the right leg forward. Go into Virabhadrasana two. So we're moving into Warrior two. So we're not going to be here terribly long. Let's see if you can make the front leg 90 degrees. Lift up. Don't let the back leg bend in. Have that heel and arch in one line. Keep pressing firmly through the outside of that back foot. Find the gaze that feels best for you. So when you start having more reverence for yourself, because you're listening to your conscience, that means that you're acknowledging what lies within. What is within? The Atman. What is the Atman? An aspect of God. So what are you? An aspect of God. When you start to acknowledge and recognize that, then you naturally have more reverence for yourself. Okay, now from here, lower down, let's move into Ardha Chandrasana. Block if you need it. And the magical thing that happens is you start having more reverence for other beings because you also recognize that God resides within them. Do you see how it works? So you have to work on yourself, self-love. Start with doing one right thing a day. And acknowledging that, like, it doesn't matter. I don't care how small it is, how trivial it may seem. It doesn't matter. Do one right thing a day. Release. Take it back, downward facing down. That's the beautiful thing about the yoga practice. Every step forward is a step forward. I don't care how small it is. I don't care if it's a step forward that's the size of a strand of hair. Second leg comes forward. Virabhadrasana two. It is a step forward. And when you take one step forward and you acknowledge that step, you begin to feel empowered and you've acknowledged to yourself, on some level, I'm worthy of loving myself. 
I'm worthy of being kind to myself because I choose to drink water instead of a pot of coffee. Because I choose to eat organic, non-GMO food so that I can have more energy to serve better. But we have to be very mindful of what it is we're doing. And why we are doing it. Are we stroking the ego? Are we loving the self? Two very, very, very different things. Take it to Ardha Chandrasana. Very different things. And we start to see and understand when we start to clear the mind. A confused mind will justify anything and everything. And right now, what planet Earth needs is love. But we can't love planet Earth until we start loving ourselves. We can't love any other being on planet Earth until we love ourselves. We can be attached. We can be very attached. And that, a confused mind, makes us think that is love. But what we need now more than anything is love. So that we have to start with ourselves. We have to. Okay, go ahead, please bring the leg to the front and let's back to that same position, so hands underneath the feet. So folks at home, I hope you can have, find some place, we're gonna to go to the wall for just a bit. Nothing too extreme, but hopefully you can find some wall space. Or close the door and you have the door that you can use. I've done that many times when I've lived in ashrams, and I have no real wall space, so. The door became my wall space. Alrighty, with the inhalation, release the feet, bring the arms up and come up. So I'm gonna just show you guys so you guys can line up on the wall. So the first thing you wanna do is, um, you're guys gonna be facing me, so you're gonna bring your right leg up and as much as you can, try to, to join stack, but you're just gonna draw the heel back and press the foot forward. So doing that a few times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Do you care if I step on your mat? No, not at all. <laughs> Might be sweaty, so okay. step at your own risk. <laughs> Fair enough. You've been warned. <laughs> How far should um, our office be? Like, you know? <laughs> so just is just try to have it so it's joint stacked. So. You can scoot it in, and then you take the foot up. And it doesn't matter, you can have it lower, and then you just heel, toe, heel, toe. Can I keep my knee bent, or do you want Yeah, to you can keep it bent, sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, keep it bent. And see if you can really press through that foot to ground it. So you're gonna fire some muscles to keep the foot up there. Mm-hmm. Just a couple more rounds here. Okay, go ahead and let that leg slide down. Now we're going to do tree pose. So, but I want the knee to touch the wall. So you can use the hand to get it up there, so I want the knee to really touch the wall. Then bring the arms up. Now when you get, so press into the wall, square the hips, try not to get any sway in the back, and then turn the opposite way. Mm-hmm, yep. 
So really press into the wall with the knee. Yet let that knee really draw the hip pointer back. Arms up and then turn towards the middle of the room. So as much as you can, just feel like you're trying to turn the torso. Press into that wall. Let the knee feel like the knee is really trying to pull back. Keep the hips coming forward. Arms up, turn the torso. Now turn to face the wall. So if you folks at home, you can do this on the floor, but so you're going to bring your right leg up and then work on just coming forward with the arms. Have the hands on the inside. So you're doing this on the wall. Yep. Knee bent. The right leg. Okay. Yep, right leg, the knee is bent. This feels nice. It is nice. It's a really good stretch. Yeah. Couple more breaths here. If you're not comfortable doing this at the wall or at home, do it just, just to a lunge on the floor. And release, and push it up. Now, keep that leg there, but shimmy that front, the bottom foot in just a little bit. And now what I want you to do is push forward and back. Try to keep the bottom foot parallel. Push the leg so it's not just the torso. Move the leg. There you go. Like straighten it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. There you go. Nice. A few more times. One more time. And push it back and release. Now you'll turn around and do the same thing. So we start the foot thing. You'll turn. Wait, how do we want this hand? So you can try to get, see if you can slide it back a little bit. And then you just take this foot. And yeah, you can take, yep. Mm -hmm. more times here. Okay, now release, go to tree pose. So knee presses into the wall, try to draw the left hip pointer back. Arms up and then really try to turn towards the center. Good. So stay there for just a couple more breaths and then go to the third and fourth thing I have to be.
about three more. And release. Now, come back to the mat. Oh. <laughs> you feel good? Yeah, I feel off. Yeah. <laughs> <Good. Answer. laughs> to the top of the mat, bring the arms up. Exhale, take it down. Time. Right leg lifts and left leg lifts, alternating between the two sets. So going back to this whole, what needs to happen is we need love. It sounds very cliche because we have been Told all these things about what love is. Love is very, love is just selfless. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, it out if you need to bring the right leg forward so we're going to do the same thing that we did on the wall drop down on that back knee hands on the inside you can stay high you can drop low if you want you can get the quad involved so you can lift the left leg up you can hook it with the whatever hand you would like first learn to love ourselves. And the way we do that is by doing the right thing. And until we love ourselves, we will never love anything else outside of ourselves. How much respect do I have for myself? 
Three times Hal's bring the second one forward. Start cultivating this respect, this love for yourself. You realize there's no room for hate. So then you can't hate others for who they are, where they are on this path. They're exactly who they should be for their evolution but you need to hold yourself to a higher standard. There's a story with Ramakrishna who had throat cancer and he was uh, dying and his, some of his, Swami Vivekananda who was one of his uh, students, his disciples, they were saying to him, you know, you're not eating and you're in so much discomfort and you're in so much pain. And he said to them, but you are eating and you are enjoying and that makes me happy. Which is so beautiful. <laughs> so here he is dying with throat cancer, can't eat and so much pain, right? Physically, but he was not identified with his physical body. But because others were enjoying, that made him happy. That's selfless. Because the body that he was in was going to be cast off, but not the soul. And please take it back to all fours. Five cat and cows, swing the legs to the left. And let's return to Upavishta Konasana. That is very selfless. If we're not enjoying, do we want others to enjoy? Happy for the happy. You can have some happiness as long as your perceived happiness is not happier than my perceived happiness. But if we love ourselves, if we have reverence for ourselves, then it doesn't matter. We very much want others to have that. That's the difference between having this inner development, this inner growth, this inner awareness, this inner happiness. You don't want to hoard it. You want others to experience it. You want to share it. You want others to have that feeling. If it's worldly, we want to hang on. If it's this perceived happiness from the outside, whether it be the most delicious cookie you could ever imagine, and there's one left, if someone comes over, do you share it with them? Do you give it to them? Or do you hide it and eat it after they leave? you share what you perceive as your valuable possessions? Could you just give them away? No. We cling, we hoard, we're greedy with worldly stuff, but when you touch some of that inner stuff, you want to share it. You want everyone to experience it. It's expansive. That's love. 
Attachment is clinging to those things, being greedy with them. So very different. Start getting rid of some of your stuff. Not the stuff that you want to get rid of. Start getting rid of some of the stuff that you have this real attachment to. Give it to someone else. Let it give, bring them some happiness. Give it to someone that you're not particularly fond of. Can you do it? I like to do periods of time where if whatever I have, if someone notices it and they mention it and they're like, oh, I like that. I'd like to, to if it's one of those periods of times in my life, my response is, do you want it? You can have it. Because it's trusting God that what I'm supposed to have, I will have. Bring the legs together, Pashivatanasana. Greed is another way of just having a poverty mindset. I have to hang on to this. I can't because what if I don't get it? What if I don't get another one? I can't afford another one. Or this makes me happy. I can't give it away because it might make someone else happier. Or it might make someone else happy. It's coming from a feeling of lack. That's poverty. And that is not love. We know what the problem is. We know what the solution is. We have to do the work. With the inhalation, bring it up. Lift the left leg, slide the right leg over, go into a twist. Remember, not fake it till you make it. That's a band-aid. It is discover what you need to do so that you can make it. Self-study. Twist to the second side. is the quality of your life? Start with 
the most gross, physical, mundane things and work out from there. What's the quality of your feet? What's the quality of your poop? Hmm? It's called an angel plant or something. I forget the name exactly. I have something called an angel plant, but I don't know what it is. And unwind. Plashy Botanasa one more time. Okay. Yeah, it's, it has really Thanks. started doing quite right. well there in that window. I think it really likes that window the best. So Pashmantanasana for about five breaths, and then we'll get ready for relaxation. Make sure you drink some extra water or herbal tea this evening too. And when you come to the back, making any adjustments so the body can become totally quiet, totally still. Space in between the eyebrows, relax. Temples, relax. Eyes, nose, mouth, relax. Chin, jawline, ears, relax. Neck. Throat, relax. Shoulders, upper arms, <coughs> elbows, forearms, relax. Wrist, palms, fingers, relax. Tailbone, lower back. Middle back, upper back, relax. Chest, belly, all the internal organs, relax. Hips, buttocks, relax. Thighs, knees. Heels, arches, tops of the feet, balls of the feet, toes, relax. The entire body has become totally, completely relaxed. Just close your eyes and think for a minute. Does the whole world love me? How many people don't love me? How many animals don't love me? How many plants don't love me? Then you will know yourself how healthy and happy you are. 
God is love. That is the essential teaching from all the scriptures. If we want to experience God, we should express that love in our life. Just as God loves everything and everybody, God loves a rat, a cat, a dog, a donkey, a pig, a sinner, a saint, an idiot, a scholar, the most beautiful and the most ugly, a good dancer, the one who doesn't even know how to walk. No matter what you are, how you are, you see that unconditional love from God. God never said, I will love you only if you do this, only if you are that. No, loving without limitations is universal love, and that is God. If you want to experience that God in your life, love everything and everybody as God would love, unconditionally. Show the same love to one and all. Let nothing get harmed, hurt, or pained, even by your thought. It is possible to, to develop a life like that. We want everybody to love us. We don't want anybody to hate us. In the same way, everybody would want that. Do unto others as you yourself would want to be done unto you. Spiritual teaching is very simple. Whether you repeat your mantra or not, whether you practice Hatha Yoga or not, whether you learn all the scriptures by heart, who worries about that? But do you have unconditional love in your life? If you have that, you have everything. Turning into the breath, directing it to the toes and the fingers. Gently begin to wiggle them. And then allowing the body to stretch and to move as if for the first time today. And when it feels right, Rolling to whichever side is beckoning. And the body decides it's time, bringing it to that seated posture. Jamahi Sugandin Pushti Vardinam Orva Rukni Vabandanan Rijo Mokshi Amamritat O Triamba Kam Yajamahi Sugandin Pushti Vardinam Orva Rukni Vabandanan Rijo Mokshi Amamritat Om Triyamba Kam Yajamahi Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Orva Rukami Vabandhanam Rijyor Mokshi Amamritat Om Triyamba Kam Yajamahi Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Orva Rukami Vabandhanam Rijyor Shiyam Amritat Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhi Pushti Vardhanam Orva Rukhani Vabandhanam Rijyor Mokshiyam Amritat Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandhi Pushti Vardhanam Orva Rukmi Vabandanan Rijyor Mokshi Amamritat Om Triyamba Kam Yajamahi Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Orva Rukmi Vabandanan Rijyor Mokshi Amamritat
cherishes. Let me forgive those that God forgives. Let me serve those that God serves. Let me love those that God loves. Thank you. See you tomorrow.